definitely one of those shows that if I missed it, I'd feel really bad about. Uh, the show, and the show was great. Like, I mean, that was, I think they had almost a hundred thousand people there. Um, so attendance was, was a my chance to see a lot of my friends again that I don't see all year when I have all year. I mean, uh, when, when con season kind of takes a, a nap. um, and I had a lot of cool new stuff to show off. So it was, it was definitely a victory lap kind of show. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Um, now, as many people who know your work very well know, you know, you do stuff in horror, you've done stuff um, that have catered to, you know, children that have been tailored towards children or younger audiences. So those are very different arenas to play around, play around in or playgrounds to be in. So can you tell me, you know, how tricky that is to kind of navigate, or maybe it's not tricky at all to navigate between those two playgrounds, so to speak. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. That's a question that I've kind of had to ask myself several times um, over my, my time working in, in comics and kids books, because, you know, people come back to this idea of branding, like what kind of person, you know, what kind of artist. What's your niche? Person? Right. Yeah. And I don't really have a like one set answer for it because that's just sort of where my career has gone. Like, I mean, I kind of followed the projects that either I, you know, ideally I like, I liked it and it was something that I, I would get paid to do. Um, sometimes it wasn't both of those things, but it was definitely one of them. Um, and then, you know, pretty soon I was like, wow, yeah, I do have a lot of like spooky stuff, horror stuff. Um, uh, I wouldn't say like inappropriate, but definitely like adult content. Um, and then, you know, I got this like almost schizophrenic other side of my, of my table. <laughs> like, Oh, then you got this, all these children's books that have really sweet, positive messages. And, um, and the Beardo series is all ages. So like um, it's definitely, I think that the, the part where it gets the most challenging is when I do conventions. Cause I have to kind of, yeah, make some decisions about where, what I bring and what I don't bring. Um, but what's been cool is that people are pretty open minded. I think like I have been able to, to do both and present both at shows, and um, and not really scare off people or confuse people. I think they look at it, and go, oh, this is just this guy's body of work. Let me see what he's got. And in, in an ideal situation. I kind of have something for everybody, you know, like if they're just like, I just want to get something from you. I just don't know what it is. I'm like, well, you know, I got, I could cover you on several different um, genres and categories. So um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not um, without its problems, but I think it works for me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. Um, and obviously if that wasn't enough outside of, you know, the uh, variety of works that, that you work on, uh, you also have an album coming. So can you talk a bit about that? That's, that's, that's awesome too. I, I do. In fact, it's like right above my head. <laughs> uh, a framed copy of it. <laughs> We're sitting in my very cluttered office right now trying to, um, trying to make sure my kids don't come screaming in here. Um, yeah, I, I'm a musician too. Um, I mean, really like my, my interests have always been art and music. Like I, I, I don't really have any other hobbies. I don't have any other, uh, I'm not in a bowling league. <laughs> um, I just sort of really like doing this stuff. And I've been playing and recording and writing for um, probably about, you know, most of my adult life, about almost 20 years. Um, and so uh, this new album is the first album that just has my name on it. It's not a band. It's I mean, I have a band, but it's not like a band name. It's not. It wasn't like a democracy in, in this case. It was definitely like me at the helm making decisions um, and doing all like 100% of the songwriting, 100% of uh, the guitar and vocal work, and um, and then just picking some of my favorite musician friends to to join me. So it was a lot of fun. Like it was it was recorded in Joliet here um at third city uh third city sound um by a friend of mine bill aldridge and we just kind of had a blast doing that last year and i was i wasn't intending on a vinyl record but i was just so happy with the results i'm like i want to put this on a record man i want to have that that uh kind of that keepsake of it you know kind of so when i'm like 60 and i'm looking back at when i, I was cool <laughs> 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 at that moment like 
yeah, look at me. I used to be cool. This is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, it, it turned out great. And the shows we've been playing, um, have been really fun because this material now people can actually take it home with them. And they also might have already heard it even before they show up so they can sing along too. Awesome. Awesome. Now, uh, Obviously, I mean, we commented kind of briefly on it before, but I'll address kind of the elephant in the room is is the landscape that we live in now. And then it's a huge thing, I feel, not just with it will have a major impact not only on the comic book industry, but I mean, we just talk about music with music as well, because I mean, huge part of being a musician is being able to travel and to, you know, uh, uh, perform. Same goes for comics, ironically, too, you know, going to conventions and constantly traveling to, you know, show your work and to get in front of, you know, uh, fans of your work. So uh, can you talk a bit about that and, and this, unlike in the last 48 hours, this crazy kind of, of environment or landscape we're in now where it's kind of, it's, it's you know, it's not really scripted or, or we don't really know what might, might come in the coming weeks or even uh, uh, next month. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's outright scary. I, I could definitely talk about this because I am definitely nervous. Um, I've been talking about this quite a bit actually in the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, last week the conversation was about Seattle because they just had canceled uh, Emerald City Comic Con. Right, um, right. Which, they yeah. cancel E three. Like, yeah, that's it's in June. So yeah, I mean, the NBA just got canceled. The uh, what else? The I mean, comic March. Back. College basketball, yeah. March Madness is is uh, a literal term now. We're just living in madness. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a mess. Um, I I know I'm supposed to have a show next week in Kansas City, and I'm I have a suspicious feeling that I'm not going to. Um, and this is for a lot of us creators um, in uh, the comic community, a significant part of our our income for the year. You know, we, we sure best in these shows, even if we. Maybe we get a comp table here and there, you know, depending on the level of uh, of your your career. But, you know, there's still other costs that go into it um, that you hope you can recoup. And then you're just not making the the revenue that you would have made and the connections you would have made at the shows. So, like, it's almost like an unquantifiable loss because you just really never know um, what could have been. Now, I mean, with some of these shows, they're not canceling but postponing. So... Sure. My hope, my hope is that, you know, they do it within the year when things maybe have calmed down in the summer or the fall and we can kind of get that money back that is part of our, our our annual income. But I think for people right now, you know, I know it's kind of scary and that maybe everyone's kind of buckling down and like, you know, doing a little belt tightening. But I mean, if you have things that you need to get from artists and you want to support them, not just me, but anybody, um, you know, reach out to them. Or like go on the website, buy those things. You have that kind of income that was meant for for that anyway, and you want to keep your um, you know, your artist friends uh, working or or doing commissions or making books or making comics. Um, buy their things. I mean, that's gonna be the way that we kind of get through this. I mean, a lot of us already are doing sort of like a virtual online convention. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. I offered, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I don't know, shamelessly promote here, but like I offered a 10% discount on my entire website just to sort of, uh, drive certain event. Yeah. And I had, I had a little fun with it because my coupon code is uh, wash your hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. It's a public service announcement and a coupon code. Um, <laughs> there you go. I'm there like, you I'm, go. I'm, I like to multitask. Um, but yeah, I mean, not just everybody. Like, I think, you know, if there's an artist out there whose work you like, um, especially if they're more of an indie creator and they don't have, um, you know, they don't have that that big kind of money coming in. Um, if they're doing creator own comics, you should, you know, it, it'd, be, it'd be great right now, especially mean a lot to them um, and to me for people to be, you know, picking up that book or getting that commission or, or whatever it is. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, Dan, um, thanks again. I really do appreciate the you know, time that we were able to uh, you know, chat about C2E2 and everything. Um, can you tell folks where they can you know, find you over on social media? Yeah, because it's going to be social media for a while. It's not going to be a show. Right, uh, right. 
Uh, definitely uh, Instagram and, and Twitter. I'm on those under at Beardo Comics, all one word. Um, if you go on Facebook, you can find me under Dan Doherty, or you can look up Beardo, and um, there's a, a like a fan page for that. Um, that is where I post like a daily strip. Um, if you want to uh, check out my website, it's uh, BeardoComics.com. And I've got all my stuff up there. So, I mean, there's, there's, you can even contact me on that one or on Facebook. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm very, very reachable uh, via social media and, and my website. All right. There you guys have it. Um, Dan, again, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens in the, in the uh, coming months. We'll get through this together. It's going to be okay. We will. All right. All right, man. Take care. Have a good one. You take care. Bye.